I am wearing an alligator skin loincloth right now. Nice. That's and I just, cool. right. Fuck you, Beavis. Fuck you, Beavis. Beavis, how could you doubt the kid, you fucking weirdy? Automatic defense procedures initiated. What we've got here is... Maximum voltage. Maximum power. Maximum carnage. This is Maximum Threshold. Call the show at... 440-709-4977. Maximum Threshold. And here's your hosts, Dom. He's actually quite smart. He just makes errors of judgment along the way. Yo, what's going on out there, everybody? Hey, I want to thank you again for tuning in to this week's edition of the Maximum Threshold Radio Show, episode 480 coming at you. And yeah, that's, you heard me right. That's 480 shows that we've had out. Plus, there's a bunch of other ones that were sprinkled in throughout all them that we didn't even count in this show. They were just like bonus, bonus tracks, I guess you could say. <laughs> that's pretty good, though, man. Once a week, that's 480 right there. That's a lot of freaking weeks. Yep, that's 10 years. I think we've only taken off maybe uh, maybe four or five shows that were scheduled out of, the, out of the whole duration of this. We even broadcast on New Year's, and we did a Christmas show on Christmas. What the hell? <sighs> I had to get myself situated over here. Wow. Okay, so we got a cool show lined up for you tonight, man. We got Bill Leverty's going to be calling in a few minutes, uh, Firehouse. I got an interview um, that was captured at NAM. Um, Gus G. You may have heard his name. So I got that. I also got some of that new Firewind. I, and I got um, Dennis, who was supposed to call in last week. 
Uh, we'll see if he calls in. See see if he's a, a go or a no this week. <laughs> Not pushing it anymore. You know. <laughs> yeah, I understand if you you know, if you can't if you miss a show or something or something's going on, my man, but if you can't make it on here and I'm doing all the I'm pimping you out prior to you coming on the show, just man, just shoot me a message, man. Just let me know. Say, hey, you know, I'm not gonna make it. I ain't got dog on you. That's not how we roll. That's not how we roll. Whoa. So yeah, got I got a cool show lined up for you, man. I got um I got some of that new live sin. I got that. I have of course it's all dedicated to Curtis. Uh, I got um the brand new morning wagon CD. I got it here. I'm holding it in my hand. Um and you know, that was my chunk. <laughs> Uh, but I got the new morning wagon and man on Tuesday, I think it is or whatever it is, wherever the first is get, get your asses online and buy it. It's like six bucks. And like I said, you already, you guys, if you guys listen to the show, you already know the music. So we're just giving you another, um, another, I don't know if, I don't know if you would call it a remix or whatever, but, um, you get to hear what we sound like when we're playing to a couple thousand people. It's pretty cool, man. I mean, the recording isn't really good, but still, you get the you get the gist of what Morning Wagon is like live in front of a lot of people. Now, I'm sure you can you can go on our YouTube page and watch some of the video clips are up there, and just see how entertaining we were on the stage, and we held it together with no problem, and we we rocked that bitch. So, um, hmm. That's what I've got to say about that. Uh, a couple more things, man. I'm telling you, I got some things going on in the works here for our show. Uh, it's going to be blowing up again this year. We're going to a different level, and I want all you guys to be on board with it. And when I get some more deets on it, I'll throw it your way. So when all this stuff comes to fruition, I don't want to start saying, you know, giving you guys hints and stuff like that. I don't want to do that this year. <sighs> because if it doesn't happen, I know it'd make the episode sound good, but <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to do that. So, um, yeah, expect man. If, if you guys are at M3, uh, we'll be there at M3. We'll be at rock on the range. Uh, M3. I don't think we're really going to be working the show. Michael's going to be going there with Shando. And you know, when, when they go down to M3, Shando gets fucking shashed. So if you see them, buy Shannon a drink or five or six, man. See if he can triple fist them. He's pretty good at that. Good guy, man. So hook a brother up down there. Michael, like I said, will be there as well. And rocking the range. Hopefully everything works out. And I'll be down there. And, and um, if you want, if you want to hook up or something down there, you know, you can buy me some water. Or if you're really hot or something, I'll give you some drinks. You won't have to pay for it because I'm. I'll hook you up. Um, yeah, and maybe I could, you know, sneak you in the tent or something. I didn't say that. I'll sneak you in and meet some bands. Um, Metallica is supposed to be playing Soundgarden and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> so it's going to be a cool festival. I'm looking forward to that one as well. Um, I think we got people covering, um, Rocklahoma as well and, Carolina Rebellion, you know, all this shit, you know, the festivals, we're trying to get people in each of them, each of those market areas to cover the, sh- you know, the, the show, the festivals for us. So, um, yeah, it's going to be cool. I've been looking forward to the summer and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, so I was talking with, um, one of my peeps who's in, um, Jakey e. Lee's camp. And he's like really, really freaking close to Jake Ely. I'm trying to get getting a vibe of what's going on and looking for a drummer and stuff. Um, recording the new Jake Lee's release, um, Red Dragon Cartel. And they're going, they're going different, man. I'm, I'm just giving you a heads up. You're hearing this early. Um, they're not going for that heavy sound this time. I think he's Jake wants to take it to his roots on this one, which is okay, man. It, it's it's cool to do. Um, I know maybe it'll probably open more doors for you, um, but he's going for that that seventies kind 
kind of hard rock and thing, that humble pie vibe, you know, that post Hendrix kind of feel, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So, hey, you know, you got to support Jake, got to support the guys in the band, Anthony Esposito's with them too. So, um, yeah, it's going to be cool. I'm looking forward to that whenever, you know, whenever it comes to fruition, I'm going to love me some Jake, man, because he's hands down one of my favorite guitarists. You know, I had a great experience with him years ago in San Diego, and man, and it's cool. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's gonna. Yeah, that's right. I've been saying that a lot, and you're going to hear that from me. That's going to be my line for the next few months. Even though it isn't something I say during the day, I'll just say it on the show. So if you run into me somewhere, don't think I'm just going to start saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what I'm planning on doing, um, I tried this uh, a few months ago. I was going on Periscope and broadcasting the show. Or not so much the show, but just doing like a little bit. So I may pop on a little later or something. We'll see. I'll just turn the camera on and we'll just, you know, you guys get to see what's going on in the studio here. Let me see what my board looks like where I got all this. I got like a hundred songs on the board here, including my commercials and promo IDs and all that stuff. My intro and the outro. And I think it's time, man, to start making some new um, commercials, some new bumpers, and definitely I want a new intro. This intro, we've had this one for a while. And this was actually made by one of the local radio stations. Um, damn, it had to be... Um, my first... It had, yeah, it goes back to about maybe 2011, 2011, maybe. Something like that. Maybe a little earlier, 2008 or something like that. Cause I we went through a bunch of different intros, and none of them really really clicked. And when we had the guys on here in the studio, and we made it the intro, and we included everybody on here. Then when they started fizzling out, um, doing their own thing, I had to take them out of the intro, and just keep it me. It's kind of bummer, man, because I missed all the other guys. But just we don't have the time there. Really go out and, you know, do what we usually do, you know. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's how the cookie crumbles in the big town. <laughs> so, yeah, that's how it is. So, once again, I want to thank you again for tuning in to this week's edition of the Maximum of All Threshold radio shows. And you have me, your host, for the duration of however how long I'm going to be on here. Uh, let's see. Oh, man. Let's see. Hold on a second. We got to pause this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Bill's going to be giving us a call here any minute now. I gave him the wrong phone number to call in. I was giving him the wrong area code number. So... Should be ringing here any second now. Let's see. Yeah, I can. Damn. I'm stupid sometimes. <laughs> Sorry, the call in number here is 440, not 449. 709 4977. Once again, the call in number here is 440 709 4977. Yeah. Okay. Uh, man, I got, like I said, I got a lot of new stuff here. I'm going to play for you tonight. Well, I'm not, I'm going to try. There we go. Hold on one second. Maximum Threshold, you were on the air. Hey, Dom. How you doing? Bill Leverty. How's it going, buddy? Great, man. How you doing, man? It's been a while since we talked. Yeah, man. Doing okay. How you doing? Oh, pretty good here. I'm sorry I gave you the wrong number. <laughs> hey, man. You know what? I mistype all the time. Man. Yeah. And, with uh, a number, you're not going to get the little red line underneath yep. it that lets you know you, you spelled the word wrong. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I, do, I do it all the time. I hear you, man. So what's going on? All right, man. Just having a good all night with the family. How about you? Nice. Yeah, I just broke away from them to do this. 
I have them all in the other it, other in the other area here. Yeah, I just I want I just want to touch bases and just see what's going on and see what you have planned, what's going on with the band, um, your solo stuff, and just just shoot the shit for a little bit. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'd love to. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, well, the band's staying busy. You know, we had a really great year last year. We did sixty two shows. Sweet and. Um, you know, we got to play a lot of places, you know, with a lot of people that we see a lot of old friends and meet a lot of new ones. And mm-hmm. We had a great year. Um, as far as my solo side project kind of stuff, I put out recordings whenever I finish a song. And um, as soon as I finish 10, I'll put out an album. But I just finished a new song. Nice. And um, I'm happy with the way it turned out. What, 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 um, like, what, 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 what way were you rolling with this one? Is it, in the same, is it in the same vein as the past, or are you doing something different with it? Um, well, I think it's different, um, but I think in some ways it's uh, you know it, it's similar. Uh, hard rock, mm-hmm. um, melodic. Um, I try to get a solo section in there that's got some energy, and um, and I'm singing and. Um, you know, when I write a song that fits my voice, I try to, I try to go with it because uh, you know I've got kind of a, a kind of a weird range that mm-hmm. doesn't um, work for everything. So I hear you. You know, this one seemed to fit pretty well. What's the What's the main way where you're going to try to get this out to everybody? Because I know these days, man, music, getting it out and you know the solo stuff is really tough. What's your What's your plan? Well, it is tough, and, mm-hmm. and with every everybody in our our genre of mm. melodic hard rock and with an artist like myself that has a history from, you know, let's say, you know, eighties, early nineties. Um, you know, it's really hard to get on the radio and it's hard yeah. to, to get, um, in a lot of the places where they are featuring new music. So my plan is just, Put the darn thing out, you know, get it on iTunes, get it uh, on Amazon and on uh, you know, CD Baby. And, I, and I, <clears throat> I have it on my website, which I, I really want to ask people to please, if they're going to get this song, please get it from my website. Because you don't have to pay Apple 30%, which is what the artists have to do when they put out a record uh, or a song. Apple gets thirty percent, and then you you need a service to get you on iTunes. You can't just yep. you know email Apple and say, "Hey, you know, put my song up there." So you you know your digital distributor gets another ten percent. So the artist is only getting uh, you know sixty percent of the ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. So I sell it for ninety nine cents. You can go to my website and get it, and uh, we don't have to pay Apple the uh, 30%. Not That's that they beautiful. don't deserve it for putting up a great service like iTunes, but uh, you know, I'd prefer if somebody would get it direct, directly from me. Now, do you deal with um, like Google Google Music as well? Yeah, I think the, the d- digital distributor that I use, yeah. and, uh, I really like them, so I don't mean to, I'm not, you know, don't have any complaints with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they get, it, they get it everywhere, so. Yeah, I deal with the Orchard, that, that company. Yeah, I've heard of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I go through CD Baby. Okay, yeah, it's a it's it's a pretty good deals, man. And, and I'm looking at like um, I don't know how many how many markets or how many places CD Baby shoots out. Do you know how many um um organizations they send it out to? Uh, I don't know exactly, but I'm going to guess that it's about twenty. Okay, yeah, check out Orchard. I, I know because I have I put a few CDs out with them, and they're sending out so I just count as like thirty nine different places which is pretty wild they had like xbox and a bunch of these other weird ones like overseas somewhere but they you know they hit all the, the normal ones too but it just opens it up i think it's like 239 countries they sends it out as well yeah, yeah. pretty cool cool ah oh, man so um back back with the music there um i I know you were working. Yeah, so my new so my new song, by the way, it's called "You're a Natural," mm-hmm. and so uh, yeah, I hope you'll hope you'll uh, you'll teach people to check it out, man. Oh, I definitely will do, I will do that. Um, being on being on the road with with Firehouse, you know, this past year, how was that? 
um, being back out, out on the road with them? Oh, it's great. We've, mm-hmm. we never really get off the road. I mean, yeah. We're, we're <laughs> playing all the time. I mean, we're, we're playing year round and we've been doing that for, since we started. Yeah. So, um, you know, we, our, our business has kind of changed in that we mainly play weekend gigs now. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we fly out on Friday, play a couple of gigs, fly home on a Sunday. It's beautiful. Typical, <laughs> our typical weekend. That's, yeah. that's a beautiful thing, man. You don't got to worry about all that stress throughout the week, you know, getting around everywhere. Cause I know a lot of other people. Yeah, there, there's the plenty of thing. stress to go oh, around, yeah. but yep. yeah, we don't have to, you know, we're not driving in a bus. Uh, mm-hmm. renting a bus, yeah. going from uh, one place to another and picking up a show on a Tuesday night when nobody really goes out anymore mm-hmm. um, on a Tuesday night. So, you know, it, it's made it so that we can focus our attention to the weekend nights and playing fairs and festivals and casinos mm-hmm. and that kind of thing, which, uh, you know, and packages, you know, we'll do some some uh, arenas and big theaters and stuff with packages and, and stuff. And it, it's turned out to be a, a really, really good thing. And I really feel a resurgence of our genre uh, coming back. Mm-hmm. Playing like, um, I want to say like the, um, the casinos. Do you guys ever go out and go gamble afterwards or you guys go hit back and just do, do the home thing afterwards? Yeah, we, we definitely do. We, we go, hang out i mean i i like blackjack mm-hmm. uh but i don't play at the high dollar table i play at the <laughs> least expensive table and I'll, I'll i'll play for a little while and if it's going well i'll play longer if it's not going well i pack it up <laughs> i know when to walk away how about the roulette Do you ever get on a roulette and just just yeah. I've, I've done it before but right. i don't really know the game well oh. enough to have any kind of uh, strategic advantage yeah. over the house so I, I don't really play that i, I the only game i really learned and 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 kind of read a book about to really study is blackjack yeah and that's that's a thing you learn in jail too oh <laughs> uh, uh. oh no it's the eights that's what they use i think it was crazy eights so what else is going on other other than the music hey. thing Ah, you know, really just concentrating on uh, putting out this latest song. Mm -hmm. Um, That's been my focus uh, for the last uh, few days. And um, looking forward to our next show. We're playing in Minneapolis with Winger Mm -hmm. um, in a couple weeks. And then after that, we do a show in Virginia where uh, we're we're playing. It's kind of a hometown gig near, uh, it's it's in Hopewell, Virginia, kind of central Virginia. And... uh, Looking forward to having a great year playing a lot of firehouse gigs. Nice. It'd have been cool to see you guys like for the inauguration show, you know, you guys being out there on the stage out there. That would have been cool. Well, we didn't get invited, but yeah. uh, had we been invited, I would have definitely loved to have gone up there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so how how was your impression of the whole election process? Um, you know, very controversial. Mm-hmm. Um um, but you know what? I think that people need to probably give uh, the, our new president a chance. Mm-hmm. What do you think about all the protesting that went all all around it? Well, I think that uh, protesting is is actually a very uh, uh, healthy thing. Yeah. Although I don't like the violent protesting. Yeah. So uh, I think you need if you're going to protest, you need to do it with class and. Um, I think that uh, yeah, I think I think that's it. You need to you need to do it with class. Yeah. Do you think that that all this um, protesting? I mean, it, I, I understand it still is going to happen, but at such a large level that it turned out this time. Do you think social media is really blowing up and it's really pushing people in the directions that they feel like they have to be part of something? So being part of a protest, whether or not they agreed or not, they just felt like they had to be part of it. There might be a little bit of that, mm-hmm. and um, I think that there's um, a lot of people who feel the opposite of what the protesters are doing yeah. that are too busy to go out and protest. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't, I'm not sure that every protest has an accurate 
cross section of America and the and the ideals and the values that people have and their 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 emotions mm-hmm. that they have. But like I said, I mean it's it's every, it's it's a First Amendment right. Let them go. Let them. Uh, gather together peacefully, and and they can get on a microphone and pretty much say whatever yeah. they want. But um, I think in the end, the people that um, watch some of these people either say something intelligent or make a fool out of themselves, mm-hmm. uh, the public can decide, and uh, you know, their their consequences will happen. So yep. that's kind of the way that is, I guess. Yeah, I think it. I th- I see it like the same way as well. Um, you know, I, I don't want to turn this all into politics or anything like that, but it's just something that's been been at me for a while because we're just looking at all these people coming together and just going against the grain, and and it, and they're just people just complaining about the whole process of the election and all that, and it's I'm glad that's all over with. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, me too. We I can mean, all get one it, thing that you know. um, I think we got to keep in mind mm-hmm. as, as Americans is that um, no matter what side you're on. Yeah. Um, everybody agreed to the same rules going into this mm-hmm. election, and um, huh. if you're going to protest because things didn't work out the way that you wanted, yeah, um, there may be a reason for that. And there may be a legitimate reason for that. So I, I always try to approach the social social media stuff um, that I read that is really one-sided i try to you know think of it as like well okay let me just try to understand where this person is coming from instead of automatically saying hey i disagree mm-hmm. and i think if you do that you can at least uh get some intelligent discourse going with with uh people without getting um uh down in the gutter with it yeah. you know it's it's um uh, Political discord. Our country's never been so divided. Yeah. Um, if I were to come out and say, "Hey, I'm really, I believe in this political party," I'll alienate 50% yeah. of my audience. Yeah, you will. And uh, honestly, you know, we can't afford to do that um, in our business because the music business is tough enough. Mm-hmm. Why do you want to, you know, lose half your audience? That's right. So I prefer to just, just kind of keep that kind of stuff i don't talk about it on my social yeah. media i try to talk yeah, I don't about either, music no. today my post on on facebook was two babies laughing at each other two twin <laughs> babies and they just kept laughing and kept laughing and hopefully that's a a little bit of a uh, distraction from all the spewing of all the political hatred that's going yeah. on out there and uh, maybe it'll help people just chill a little bit and, yeah. and enjoy Enjoy your day instead of, you know, having to wake up and start, uh, you know, s- typing about how terrible things are or about how you hate the other side yep. or about how your side is right. Mm-hmm. You know, let's talk about something else. That's right. That's one of the things I learned over the years. I was in, I was really into politics in um, mid-90s all the way to 2000 when I ran for office and and. Uh, did a, did a lot of that. I was real involved with the party and stuff. And one one of the things that I learned very at the at the very beginning is that one thing is you're not going to convert people, uh, if, especially you know if, if they're against you to start off with. I mean, you could you could share ideas, but you're not going to convert them to you know to swap parties. And it's just like religion too. You can't you can't change people's minds once they're, they have it set in their head. You're absolutely correct, mm-hmm. and I'll take it a step further or closer, however you want to look at Mm -hmm. it, you're not going to convert them, but you're not even going to convince them of an issue that they're so dug in on that they feel that, you know, hey, it's got to be this way. Uh, You know, analog sounds better than digital, Mm -hmm. you know, to to not to to take it away from politics. And when somebody has their mind made up, you know, you can say, why is it that you, you, you feel that way? And let them explain it. And you can go, oh, you know, th- that's cool. I respect your opinion. I differ from your opinion, and I have a different point of view, and and that's cool. And then if they say, well, you know, let me hear about yours, then 
you know, they've proven to you that they can not only talk, but they can also listen. Yeah. And then you can have a, a, an intelligent conversation. But I find that uh, in this political environment, most people want to do talking and they don't really want to do much listening. That's right. Yeah. And, and they and they want to throw it out there in social media. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's their, that's their echo chamber. Yep. That's it's crazy. Remember the MySpace days? It was nothing like that. <laughs> Everybody was out well, there. You're just trying to make your web page look good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened to uh, to, <laughs> to MySpace. Everybody went over to Facebook. Yeah. It's just you know all billion uh, of us. Yep. You know, shut down our page over here and went over there. I was just the most incredible phenomenon yeah, I've, I'd ever seen. And I'm sure there'll be more coming yeah. up uh, in the future. I mean, I, I who knows what the future holds. Mm-hmm. I mean technology just moves at such a fast pace yeah. and we can't keep up, but um, it's going to be hard to see how anybody can, can beat Facebook yeah. or Twitter for that matter. Yeah. Although I don't know how either one of them is making any money, mm, but yeah. uh, maybe a little bit in, in advertising. But, oh, they're uh, making the data they're... collection. That's where it's all at. They're... I guess so. Yep. That's cause that's, uh, with... which is frightening. Yep. They're going but, by, um, you know, it's you, you think about uh, who is going to beat Amazon. Yeah. You know, here's a company that has gotten so big that there'll be, never be another online retailer, I, in my opinion, yeah. that will be able to beat them. And you can buy something on Amazon and have it delivered to you the same day in yeah. some cases. And it it's cheaper than you can get it at, let's say, Best Buy. Mm-hmm. Um, so... How are how are these other retail stores like Best Buy's and and others going to stay in business? Yeah. Um, you know, my I'm looking into my crystal ball, which it, granted it's not very clear. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, man, a lot of these stores down the main strips or the main streets of these these towns around America are going to be des- desolate yeah. because a company like Amazon. Or, or, I don't see anybody else that's competing with Amazon for that space is going to be, a, you know, but that the, Amazon is going to put all these companies out of business because, you know, you, you save a lot of money buying yeah. from Amazon. I could yeah. see, I could see something like, like Walmart or something, you know, they, they, you know, they boost up, they kick their website's ass and get it and change it into a new direction. But they got, that's an organization there where they could probably give Amazon a good run. If they yeah, I agree. Different. Amazon, you know, but, but still that that brick and mortar yeah. and um, you know the, the the expense they have with that, it's that's going to be the one, the, probably the last one standing, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, remember when the WalMarts were blowing up in the '90s, going everywhere, and all the strip malls were closing down, the malls were shutting down, people were holding protests against Walmart moving into their communities, and mom and pop shops I were do. closing down. I do. It's, it still oh, happens man. today. Yeah. You know. Uh, Walmart will open up, give uh, 150 new jobs to the community, mm-hmm. and everybody, uh, you know, and then protesters come out and complain. Mm-hmm. And so, I, uh, who knows, but uh, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. Uh, let's see here. Just a couple more things here. I know you got to get going. Uh, but yeah. but how can people get a hold of your new music? Oh, Leverty.com mm-hmm. is the is best place. My website, my last name, dot com. L e v e r t y dot com. And you have your um that your new song on there, like is it like a YouTube or something? Don't have it on YouTube. I haven't shot a video yet, but I got videos of all my other singles, uh, and just about all of them uh, that I've um, done for this record. I've done a couple of singles for you know this is my fifth solo album, so yeah. I've done a couple of a couple of videos for some some of the previous um, albums songs and um you know i might do a, a video for this one i don't nice. know i haven't decided yet you know i've got i've got more work to to do on getting the rest of the songs for this album done so uh, this is seven songs i've i've finished for this album three more and i'll have an album so i'm kind of wanting to finish them nice videos take a lot of time oh yeah even when you try doing them at home make make your own still takes a lot of time <laughs> yeah 
Okay, Bill. Hey, man, I want to thank you again, you know, just for taking some time out on a, on a Saturday night just to talk with us, just to get everybody caught up with what's going on with you. And even though we went down a little political road there, but it's pretty cool just to it's all break, good. It's break good a little different. It's all good. It's Thanks nice. a lot for your time, Dom, and Anytime. thanks to everybody at Maximum Threshold thanks. for your support. And can you do me a quick favor and do a promo ID for our radio show for Maximum Threshold? Yeah. Hey, you guys, this is Bill Leverty from Firehouse, and you're listening to Maximum Threshold. That was perfect, Bill. Thanks again, man, for calling in here. And, Sorry, buddy. And when you get thanks that, a lot. have a great. And when you yeah. some, when you got that song, the the link for people to download it, shoot it over to me, man, and, and I'll put it out to all our social media outlets. Cool. I appreciate it, buddy. Okay, man. And have a good one. So when you get a chance, everybody out there, just take, you know, go over to Lever- Bill Leverty's website. So it's once again, it's Leverty.com. That's L-E-V-E-R-T-Y. And go there and check it out, man. He's got his music up there. Um, you can get his music. You can purchase it right there. I mean, like, like we talked about already. And yeah, that's where it's at. such a great guitarist man that's right okay man we'll be back after this I want to thank everybody for tuning in I want to thank Bill again for being on the show and definitely get back to his website leverty.com get his stuff man he's got a really killer website he's got some good merch on there and I want to talk about his guitars too but we'll do that some other time so yeah that's it Back after this here on Maxim Threshold. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, don't go anywhere, man. Right back. We knock out some of these commercials. We'll be right back. That's all the commercials for the night, baby. Looking for reliable and affordable shoutcast audio, 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 or video hosting? JWN Media offers complete shoutcast hosting solutions for business or personal use. All plans come with full listener stats, custom web scripts for implementing your service into your existing website, full server control, super fast network, and huge bandwidth limits. A 99.5% uptime guarantee and friendly, knowledgeable support personnel dedicated to making your hosting experience fun and easy with plans starting at only three dollars a month you have no excuse not to get a server of your own plus with the option to add auto dj and on-demand services you can be confident your station will be all it can be custom plans are also available at their website simply visit jwnmedia.com and click the shoutcast hosting link to get started right now phone lines are open Call us now, 440-709-4977. Once again, the call-in line in the studio here is 440-709-4977. We'll be prepared. You call. You will be on the air. Have a smartphone, iPod, iPad, or even Roku? Grab the app, tune in, and search Maximum Threshold and hear the show live directly from your device. If you want to follow Maximum Threshold Radio, you can do so. You can find us at MaximumThreshold.net, Facebook, Facebook.com slash Maximum Threshold Radio, Twitter at Max Threshold. You can also get us on YouTube at youtube.com slash maximum threshold. Pretty damn simple, huh? Check us out. Follow us. Be part of us. Miss the live show? Go to stitcherradio.com and search maximum threshold and listen in today. That's maximum threshold and stitcher radio. A match made in heaven. You can text message the show right now at 
440-252-0058. Once again, that's 440-252-0058. Text the show. Hey, it's contest time. Be the second person to text the show at 440-252-0058 wins. That's right, call number two, 440-252-0058. Shoot us a text and you'll win. You can now hear the Maximum Threshold radio show on Stitcher Radio. Uh, Stitcher allows you to listen to your favorite shows directly from your iPhone, Android phone, BlackBerry, and Palm Pre. On demand and on the go. Don't have Stitcher? Download it for free today at Stitcher.com. Once again, you can hear Maximum Commercial Radio Show on Stitcher.com. Listening to the show is like waking up the next morning and finding a big fat chick next to you. Wait, what the hell happened? <laughs> Maximum Threshold is modern-day porn music for the world. Tune in every Saturday night from 8 till 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and feel all mushy inside. Because I do. And now for new music sent in for you to check out. Hi, Stephen Piercy from Rad. You're listening to MaximumThreshold.net.
And there you go. That's some brand new Stephen Piercy for you here on Maximum Threshold Radio. I want to thank Bill Leverty again for being on the show and talking with us. It was really cool, man. And I appreciate that. Just like I appreciate every single one of you taking your time and listening to this fun show. Uh, very Tonight was very educational. <laughs> Hope you guys got a kick out of that. I definitely wanted to um, talk more than just music with Bill, because I know he's done a lot, seen a lot and done, you know, all kind of stuff. So uh, one of these days, uh, maybe we can get him back on here. Well, we will. I'm saying we'll, we'll get more in depth with some other stuff, not politics, because it, it'll be an awful election year. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the, we just got them playing the new Stephen Piercy uh, off the Smash CD. Um, I got a contest. I'll be giving away um, a copy of that here um, a little bit. So if you guys want to um, get your grubby little nubs on some new Stephen Piercy, I can make that happen for you. And it's pretty cool, man. We got I got to get Eric back on the show uh, as a guitarist in his band. Eric, Eric was funny. Remember the interview that uh, Michael did with the with Stephen Piercy's band, and they were talking about Blotzer. Oh, I gotta find that clip where he's talking about he, they can he can eat bowl of dicks or something. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna find that because that was funny, and I I don't think Blotzer thought it was funny. You know, Bobby, you could have been on the show so many times, man, but you always ignored us, and you made it a promo ID for us, and I I was very respectful about that. Um, but your follow follow through skill sucked. So sorry, man. <sighs> you were like you were like our our hero over here. And you just didn't wanna you know be part of our funness over here. Let's see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Bobby Blotzer's promo ID, where's that? Let's hear this. What do you have to say your name, your band? Okay, my name, what, what is my name, what is my band? No, well, okay. What is the band you want to be with? On what show? Maximum Threshold. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Bobby Blotzer here, backstage here in Cleveland. And you're listening to Threshold. I think. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hey, what's going on, you motherfuckers? It's Bobby Blotzer from Rat. You listen to Threshold Maximum Live. Well, am I saying this right? No, but it's, it's all right. Yeah. I usually write these out. Maximum Threshold. No, that makes it makes, right. them, makes it even better right. if I play them like that. Yeah, play them like You know what? Okay. Fuck everybody. Put some Rat on, motherfucker. Bye. <laughs> that was cool. Yo. <laughs> that was a really shitty recording. It wasn't. That was actually back. That was backstage at a House of Blues. We were in. There was a bar they have upstairs. You have to take an elevator to get to this room because it's like way out of nowhere and you can't get to it anywhere else other than taking an elevator and be escorted up there. And it was. It was pretty cool, man. I remember that night. That was. A lot of fun. Get to, get to shoot the shit with my friends, especially with Carlos Cavazzo. I like seeing him. He's a cool dude. Um, got to talk to my hero, um, the guitarist in the band. So both guitarists. Warren Martini. That was cool. And Kelly, when she was with me, um, she she thought I was, I was a fanboy because I was like stuttering and stuff. But that's just how I am. I'm just naturally like retarded. <laughs> uh, so, I, like I said, I got we got an interview here in like five more minutes. Um, but I I still got this interview that we're gonna we'll roll out afterwards with the Gus G interview. Um, I got this that brand new Bill and Phil. I got a song lined up for you. 
I got that um, new um, Live Sin song. I'm waiting for them to hurry up and throw the whole damn new one out. But they're only like, we're going to give you samples. I don't want just samples. Give me the whole thing, you know. Uh, so I, I did a search on my computer for a bowl of dicks. <laughs> and it's, I, I, it came up, I was going to say I came up short. Uh, so um, let me see, let me try it again. I want to find it because that was such a funny clip. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to do another search for dicks on my hard drive. Damn, that sucks. See, that's when you, when you, when you, you I'm glad nothing pops up. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I can't, I must have deleted it or something. I don't know. Um, I know I sent it to a couple people and they listened to it and I know uh, it got, it got around, I'm blabbermouth and all that cool stuff. <sighs> okay, let's see. Let me get back on track here. Like I said, I got some new music for you. I'm going to throw it at you. Let me do this. Let me knock out this two-minute um, music thing that we got here um, from Rock and Metal News. I'm going to take my shirt off. No, maybe not. <laughs> Maximum Threshold Radio, you're on the air. Hey, how you doing today? Oh, pretty good. This is Dennis Conti. I'm hey, Dennis. Of, what's... Uh, Shannon's. Cool. So what's going on, man? Not too much. Just uh, appreciate uh, you taking the call. Oh, no problem, man. Um, I'm, I'm not too familiar with the radio station, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, I need to uh, get more familiar with it. And we kind of so like... Can, uh, with with the with our radio show, we kind of think of it like as um, a retarded version of that metal show, where we cover like music news and we try to put a little comedy twist to it, and um, we just 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 roll with it. I mean, it's it's there's nothing else like this out there. There's a lot of a lot of other stations have copied us over the years. Uh, we've been around over eleven years. Uh, just doing now, this. How do I hear it for here in Rhode Island? How do uh, I? You go to I go to our, my computer. Yeah, you go my phone. Or? Yeah, you can go on your phone. You can get the TuneIn app if you you know you go on um, just just do a search for TuneIn, and then once you TuneIn. yeah once you install that on your phone, then you just do a search for Maximum Threshold and we should pop right up there. Either that or you can just awesome. go. To, or you can just go to the maximumthreshold.net. There's a player that pops on automatically, and it'll start playing. Yeah. There's like a bunch of different ways on there too, <clears throat> but this is also recorded, so it's all part of the podcast. And it's this gets sent out. It's it's internationally syndicated, so we're we're actually live right now in um, Nicaragua and El Salvador. It's in Sarajevo. Oh. We're in Athens, Greece. And I think the Netherlands right. is still um, broadcasting us too. That's just those those um, that's real radio stations out there that are playing yeah. us. Plus, uh, we also we have our the podcast that people are just doing who are subscribed to like iTunes or on Google Music or Google Play, whatever that is. Uh, you can yeah. also subscribe to the show where you would just get just the show and you get to you know hear whatever's going on on it. And we're also like on on Roku. So we have our own station on there as well. So there's a lot of ways that people can nice. listen to this. Uh, for, for, yeah, the pe- pretty good. for the people who don't know who you are, I want to give them a little brief of, of what you do. Yeah, well, um, my full name is uh, Dennis Conti. I uh, live here in Rhode Island. Um, the smallest little state in the union, that's what <laughs> they call us. Uh, we're nice. We're right near the ocean, so it's yeah. like 20 minutes and you're at the ocean, mm-hmm. you know. Um, small little state. We're known for a lot of different things, food, art, stuff like that. Um, I'm just the uh, local mason of the city of Cranston. Mm-hmm. I live in Cranston, Rhode Island, and uh, single father of two girls. I got two daughters at uh, uh, 16 and 18. And that's a, that's always a fun challenge. Oh, that is. I know the feeling. 
I've been there, been there a bunch of times. Mine are twenty. I apologize. Oh, I didn't get a God. chance to call last week. Oh, that's all right. Was tied up with them. Oh, that's all right. I no, I understand how it is. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, keep well, go on. So, uh, so you were saying you have uh, your a family yourself? What yeah. Do you, what do you have for children? I have um twenty three, twenty two, a nineteen, and an eight year old. How's that for a gap? <laughs> well, that's uh, it, you know you got your numbers spread out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I'm sure there's, uh, you know, it sounds like a heck of a a mix of family. So, I mean, it must be different, too, you know. Yeah. I have two that are two years apart, and that's it. Wow. And yours are, you like know, a right decade. But, uh, <laughs> hey, we get what we get. That's we don't right. have a choice, usually. Mm-hmm. I think it. I, I kind of like it this way, especially with the younger one, uh, because now I yeah. can, like, dedicate more time to her. And I think about the yeah. things I want to do with the older ones I never did. And I can yeah. it make makes you feel like you got a second chance at, at like a do over kind of. Yeah, I tried to pour as much out uh, during the last ten years of my daughter's lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, doing softball and yeah. uh, camps, and you know, taking them here and there, and you know, Mount Washington, and you know, New York City every year for the tree, and you know, go to Canal Street for the deals and see the atmosphere of. Uh, city life. I like Manhattan. Are you familiar with Manhattan? Have you been out there that much? I've been out there once, but I've been to the airport a gajillion times. You know, the uh, the city's electrifying. You Mm -hmm. know, it's like you feel you could feel the the hype when you're there. You know, it's cool. We were there right around New Year's and Mm -hmm. uh, spent the night in Manhattan and went off to New Jersey to Atlantic City where uh, we stayed, you know, one night too, and uh, you know, like traveling the East Coast a little bit. I've never been out to what is this, Ohio? That I'm yeah. speaking yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, right, so out, right outside of Cleveland area. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, there's really nothing over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah well, you know, um, well, I mean, you're there, so yeah. there's something. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. We got get the calves. We got we got the yeah. got the Browns uh, barely. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, you got to stay through the hard times. You know, right. there's not a you know, right now New England's going for their Super Bowl, and you know, I'm a Patriot fan, and mm-hmm. it's New England. So, what what is the vi- hype around that? What is what do you think is the the real vibe uh, between this game? Do you think um like do you have any like inside and scoop about um? What is you know what's um, who should win and why should they win and any dirt on any other other one of the teams? Well, I hope the best team wins. I mean, even though I'm New England, uh, yeah. you know, people and I and the Patriots are in it. I mean, you know, it's it's ironic because the high school I went to is the Falcons, so <laughs> it's it's like you know you against yourself, yeah. but you know. The alma mater from high school is the Falcons, and the local team is is the Patriots, and those are the people that are in the final. So, yeah. hey, you know what? I mean, whether it's the the Falcons, they have just as much of a shot to win it. Of course, it'd be storybook for Tom Brady to get mm. five, yeah. you know, and all that good stuff, and Belichick and all that. And so, it's almost like that's the way it's going to be written. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's always the game's not over yet. It has, yeah. You know. <laughs> We'll see when it's over. You know, it could mm-hmm. be stranger things have happened. You know, mm-hmm. people are expecting the Patriots to win, and then Atlanta could come and scoop it up, and you never know. I mean, it's it's you know what this this I, this sort of gives you that feeling of the election all over again, where New England is the Hillary Clinton and Trump is the Atlanta Falcons. So let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. It's all expected yeah. to be Brady and. And those guys, but you never know what happens. This is this is it's a this is the NFL, man. Anything can happen. Yeah, the Browns could go one and fifteen in the season. You know who would have thought that? Well, last year he could have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was tough. Mm-hmm. So what do you what do um 
you like you do you do a clothing line or what 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 else do you do? Yeah, I mean besides being the local mason mm-hmm. uh doing concrete work and masonry work around the city, I uh I've been doing custom leather work for about uh well since the eighties. Yeah. Nineteen eighty six my uh my late uncle who just passed away last year, he taught me how to do um this leather work. You know, and for it's almost like therapy. You know, yeah. you take your mind off of other things, and you can be, you can create stuff, and it mm-hmm. all depends on where you want to take it. So, I was doing little things like uh, patches, and then started going to uh, like my interior of my truck. You know, mm-hmm. like armrests and stuff like that. And then I took a little hiatus from it for a while, and then I started doing airbrush work. You know, I taught myself how to do airbrush Mm -hmm. and then uh, was doing murals, uh, helmets for the uh, the local, the local softball teams, which my daughters were on. But I would actually take my radio, my compressor, small little compressor, didn't make any noise. And I'd actually airbrush helmets right at the field. Oh, that's So it was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like a little entertainment. They could see me spraying helmets and I was watching my daughters play. So... Mm -hmm. I did that for a few years, and until they got out of that, after they got out of that, um, I kind of went hardcore with the leather, and all of a sudden I started making bracelets, and people would, you know, the social media came about, and I, you know, it was almost like a plain bracelet, like a cuff, Mm -hmm. with just maybe a little metal on it or a Holly Davidson logo or something, you know. I don't make Holly Davidson stuff. I yeah. just repurpose stuff. What I do is I buy metal, stainless steel metals or, you know, like hardware that I find wherever, hobby shops, um, different places, whether it be, you know. So I would decide on what I see, like uh, crosses or maybe non-religious items, whether it be a biker thing or you know, cameo, your grandmother's cameo, you don't know what to do with it. So I would repurpose all these items onto a cuff. Oh, sweet. And, you know, it started going local with the local, uh, you know, places that would play the local music with the, you know, bar rooms or whatever, and uh, music events. And it seemed to work well. You know, I connected with the public. People always wanted to wear a bracelet or a cuff while they went out mm-hmm. and, you know, listen to music. Or even if you went to a sports event, I I would take, I made a few Patriot. I, so far, I've tried to make almost every team per request or, you know, do the popular ones, you know, obviously New England, Dallas, the Steelers, you know, mm-hmm. I did get a a request for the Browns. I did, I did one for, you know, somebody. And so people can represent while they're wearing their Jersey, they can wear their cuff that can go along with whether it's the Bruins, you know, the giants or whoever. So uh, pretty much it allows people to express themselves on their wrists with whatever they're feeling. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because the things I'm going through in life are allowing me to make these things, you know, by having, having the, the mental to, you know, put, put it through leather and express yeah. myself through this and be able to share it with people. So, um, next week I'm actually going on the monsters of rock cruise for the first oh, time. Sweet. I would love um, to hit that. Up. Which, which is really cool. I got a last minute ticket. Somebody couldn't go. They posted <laughs> it on Facebook in a group. Monsters of Rock group mm-hmm. and uh, this entertainer, the promoter from Maryland, actually, Brad Lee. He's a good friend. I met at M3 along with I met Shannon out in an M3. Yeah. Um, he actually, Shannon actually has one of my cuffs. Um, I think he might be wearing it in a couple of pictures. <laughs> and, uh, So, you know, um, a lot of the, I was able to get behind the scenes at M3 last year in Maryland. So I met all these interesting people. Uh, I made a clothing uh, outfit for Gabby Ray, who's a young upcoming artist, who's really unique. 
Her voice is powerful. Uh, she's got two great parents that are behind her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, you know, we worked together for a little while. You know, I uh, gave her a Patriots cuff. She went to the Gillette Stadium. She sang the national anthem. That was nice. Um, and she got my cuffs through some people. There's a, guy, uh, a, a photographer out in Arizona, uh, Gunner Cow, Rob Cow. He, he took a bunch of my cuffs on the last monsters of Rock Cruise, and it kind of ignited some of the uh, interest. You know, a lot of people make different things, but mm -hmm. I like to make one-of-a-kind things so they're not mass-produced. Yeah. So the artist, can, me being the artist, I can connect with the music artist and then the people that listen to it. So it's mm -hmm. like a nice little uh, den of iniquity, you yeah. know, <laughs> a nice little <laughs> circle. How long does it take you to make one of them? Um, each one maybe you know, a little different uh, time depending on detail and what I'm thinking. And, uh, I'll make four at a time. I'll have four different ones lined up mm -hmm. and then, I'll put one down and then go back to it later just to, as long as I get the centerpiece on there and secure, because everything's hand stitched. Okay. In other words, if I get a piece, an ornate piece, whether it's, uh, you know, some spikes or a Maltese cross, I'll cut some layers of different color leather. I'll establish the leather of the cuff first. Say, if you mm -hmm. want black, we'll use black. Then I'll get a Maltese cross and I'll cut some, different colored layers underneath it and stack it and then punch the hole in it, screw the back on there and then maybe put it down and do it another one, you know, and I'll get three or four lined up with the centerpieces and then do all the little bit of stud work or, you know, um, rhinestone. I use all genuine Savorsky rhinestones, which, you know, the people like and, when the light hits them, they look really nice. And uh, then I put a a different color leather on the inside, nice smooth leather, and then glue it up and then stitch it all hand on the edges with a nice border mm -hmm. and then put the snaps on it and either display it on the social medias, you know, like Facebook and Instagram, Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a LinkedIn account. I'm on that. Those are all the places I can be found, you know, uh, Dennis Conti designs. That's what I go on. To, and, uh, you know, I just keep rocking the cuffs. That's how it's a catchy little thing. You know, uh, I, uh, donate quite a bit, you know, if, uh, there's a raffle for a, a cause like a bike run, somebody passed away, they do a bike run for yeah. somebody. I'll donate a his and her cuff and they'll put it in the, the lineup of the baskets and people can bid on it and, you know, or there's breast cancer ones I've done. I've given, uh, I've given for that. And I remember, I'm sure you've heard of that Dorian D strong. Remember that young boy oh, yeah. that passed away mm -hmm. last year? He made, he made, he became so famous. He was, a, you know, uh, I get chills talking about it because I met the parents and we did a big event here in Cranston cause he's from, He's a local kid here in Rhode Island. So I made two cuffs, one for his mother, one for his father. Donated those. They were raffled off. They brought, I don't know how much. I don't even care. You know, whatever it yeah. is, you know. So I like to spread what I have, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't have much, but I like to spread. <laughs> is this profitable some, to you? Some good thing. Do you make good money off this? Or is it just out of the fun of doing it? Well, the donate. Well, the donating ones. No, I'm not. Yeah. I mean, the other ones that people are uh, see on the social medias, they can hit me up, inbox me, and I can ship them out. And there's a price on. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, I'm not a philanthropist and can't donate everything because yeah. obviously the time has to be considered and the materials have to be purchased and all the hardware to go along with it and. You know, I'd like to recoup a little bit. Yeah. You know, obviously the the celebrities to for me to get the endorsement, I I'm more than willing to give them something. Mm -hmm. So there's qu quite a few of them have my stuff, like Tom Kiefer from Cinderella, mm -hmm. um, Mark Slaughter, uh, the guys from Y and T, Alice Cooper. I got to meet him here at uh, 
there was a convention of uh, comic books called Comic Con. Yeah. And I got to make him one, and I waited in line and met him. And, you know, I post the pictures on all the social medias to go along with, uh, you know, my experience. It's humbling to meet them. And, you know, I'm not looking for anything. Usually people want stuff signed and all that, and I'm not into that. I want to give them back a little something, and I'm hoping they appreciate it, wear it, and maybe it's nice when one or two you know, can actually be seen with it on. And then they, you know, I, mm -hmm. I'm able to tag them myself or promote it that way. And then yeah. the people from all over the United States and whoever sees it on the social medias, they'll, they'll send me a message. We'll work something out. They can pay me through PayPal mm -hmm. and uh, I'll ship it out and uh, ship them some business cards and they share it. And when they get it, they, they say that they can't believe how it looks because <laughs> like they just see in pictures yeah. and when you actually see it and put it on and feel it, they say it's really, you know, it's nice to, to be able to wear something that's handmade and the only one, you know? Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Maybe we could work out something here to help. Um, maybe cause we're looking for sponsors over here. Maybe, you know, you'd like to, um, you know, try yeah. to, we could we could help you try to hustle some some of your stuff on our show and on our website and in our all our other sites yeah. as well. Maybe we can work out something. Yeah, I'd make a some mag, a maximum threshold cuff. Yeah, we, that'd be cool. Or like an armband, you know, like a a, a fighting armband. Now, are you are you in a band? Are you and the guy the Shannon who I met at yeah. F three, the one that told me all about this. Yeah, we're both in the same band. Right. Right. I'm the better. So, I'm the better looking um, one of the two. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, I haven't seen you. I, I don't know if I've seen you. Or I've met you. You were probably at M3. Was, were you with him? No, I, I didn't. I didn't go with it. I, I was doing the show here. I was here with the family. Oh, I see. Yeah, him and Michael yeah, went. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So I mean, um, I have to get an address and come up with something and send okay. you out something and uh you know if you can share some of my photos yeah i definitely do your, that. I, if you have a visual site mm -hmm. uh he he sent me a few different things he sent me the uh, artwork of your maximum threshold he sent me two two photos okay. and i was going to try to figure out how to put something together mm -hmm. um like photo wise along because he he sent me shannon sent me a picture of him with the gene simmons car or something like that in las vegas mm -hmm. and you can see the cuff he's wearing that okay. i made and um uh, that was going to try to put something together like that mm -hmm. and then promote it through the twitter do you guys have twitter accounts yep. and all that and yeah. instagrams and facebooks yeah I'll, I'll hit up all your sites as well after we're done tonight okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll hit. I'll, I'll I'll get all that together from you as well. Sounds good. I appreciate it. You know, I, I never had the opportunity to uh, be on a, you know, syndicated <laughs> show like this, or maybe that's the wrong word. Oh, that's all right. That's uh, cool. A show that's, you know, on the radio throughout many different areas and mm -hmm. tumbling. It's, it's a, you know. You're Never doing had a, a chance to talk, uh, you know. Anyway, you know. You're doing a great job, man. Better than I am. I'll tell you that. <laughs> you sound like a pro. Well, I, I took a, I took a little class of radio and television back in the late '80s and early '90s. Yeah. I would work a full day of construction and do concrete work in the mm -hmm. heat. And after I got done with that, I'd go take a shower, run to my <laughs> radio and television broadcasting um, class, and. Mm -hmm. I got my uh, communications the associate's degree in communications, yeah. and that's kind of it was kind of cool. I never really did much with it, but you know, it was fun in the making trying to get you know that degree. You never yeah. know. Yeah, I got a, I had a degree in political communications, so like political science and communications. Yeah, that's cool. That's I cool. Never did anything with that degree. I work at a hospital. So you're in the band and you have the degree in political science. Yeah. And what else? You're a father of, would you say four? four? Yep. 
<laughs> three dogs, two fish, a cat, and wow, uh, yeah, that's about it. The whole. Tell me you don't have a, a picket fence and no hell no. My my right. fiance said if we ever had a fence, she hates picket fences. She said she'd run. I'd have to drive down there and <laughs> drive through it. That's what she <laughs> says. She'll go right drive right through it. <laughs> yeah, we're realist. Yeah, I got a. My only animal right now uh, is, uh, and she's looking at me. Um, is my um, black? I have a black pit bull. You know, American <laughs> Staffordshire Terrier. She's a good girl. She's uh, full of full of. Uh, Full of energy all the time, but mm-hmm. I take her in the car with all the truck, and we drive around. You know, I let her run through the through the parks and stuff, mm-hmm. whatever. While I'm usually, I take my cups with me, and I'll set them up somewhere, and I'll take some photos of them, and you know, try to get some a nice backdrop along yeah. with them. You know, mm-hmm. whether I go to the beach and take them by the sand and the water. So I get the best of both worlds, a little bit of, uh, you know, beaches. Mm-hmm. And uh, even in the winter, it's not, you know, even though it's freezing. Yeah. It's still nice to go by the water, you know. You can oh, go yeah. the rest, there's restaurants right on the water, so. Yeah, we don't have too many we of have them a place here. here <laughs> we have a place here in Providence called Federal Hill, which is probably 50 att- different type of restaurants. Oh, wow. Known for, um, you know, back in the day. The old uh, organized crime or mm-hmm. uh, mob, you know, thing. Yeah. Federal Hill, all Italians. Now it's all a mixture of uh, nationalities, which is still fine. It's awesome that everyone's able to have their restaurants and different flavors and different nationalities. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, we it's have not just uh, Italians. Yeah, in the in the Cleveland area, we have this one area. It's called Murray Hill. And it used to be like all the Italians used to live there, and you know my mother used to live there when she was a kid, and it just it just got so diverse, and now it's now it's been overran by Asians, which is pretty wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, what's your national? You, obviously, you said you're a t- half Italian. Are yeah. you Italian? Or? Yeah, half Italian, half um, Mohawk Indian. Oh, that's a cool, uh, cool mixture. Yeah, it is. Pretty wild. You probably have long hair, right? No, it's real short. Um, Everybody else in my family had long hair, but the older I got, you know, I was in the military for 10 years, so I just got so accustomed to having it short. And when I get longer hair, the longer hair I get, the more fatter it makes my face look, and I don't (laughs) don't care for that. (laughs) I hear you. So what's the weather like there in Ohio right now? It is 20, 29 degrees, and there's snow out there. Oh, yeah. We haven't had too much snow. I'm, it, we're 35 degrees right mm-hmm. now. It's a little chilly, but we had a couple of little storms. But, you know, and because I work for the highway department, I'll plow during the storm. I have a little district that I take care of i dispatch all the bigger trucks and the privates with their f-250s and whatever they do all the side streets which is kind of cool and maybe you could send them over this way next (laughs) because they never hit our (laughs) side streets over here yeah well i'm in a f-550 dump truck i make sure that uh you know the areas are all done and in between make sure all the secondary mains Mm -hmm. are all clear but Gotcha. So Let's, yeah, I mean, uh, now is it just a talk show, or do you play? Oh, I play music, music here. And, yeah. yeah, and we have interviews that I we have. Um, we just had on right before yeah, you wanna, was we had Bill Leverty on, who is a guitarist in the band Firehouse. Oh, cool! And then right after you, I have an interview with Gus G, who's a guitarist in Ozzy. Awesome. So you're you're, you're sandwiched between two guitarists. <laughs> I'm I'm honored to be the the uh, the filling, <laughs> <laughs> the white creamy filling between them. Yeah, I do have my winter coat on, so I am feeling a little. Uh, I just had a a platter of sushi. Oh, did I you? just came back from the local, uh, you know, Thai food here in Rhode Island. Uh, Ooh, that sounds good. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with sixteen pieces of sushi. Oh no. <laughs> So what are your what are your oh, webs- all this, 
all assorted. <laughs> what are your websites where we could um, direct people to? Well, I have a, uh, like I said, I got uh, two Facebook pages, mm -hmm. which is Dennis Conti Designs, my personal page, Dennis Conti. Uh, it's all the same. I post on everything. And then there's uh, Dennis Conti Designs on Instagram and Twitter and uh, Conti's custom designs, which is on the web, but you know, it, it, it's easier. It seems like it's easier to connect with the three I mentioned earlier. You know, yeah. those three medias seem to be basically how I communicated with the world and been able to pictures and it's become easier, you know, to communicate with those three, three things. Mm -hmm. And then learning how to hashtag and and how when you do certain things with certain pictures, you know, uh, put certain names in certain ways, it goes further out than just, you know, yeah. every, uh, other people see it, you know. Mm -hmm. But as everything else, you have to teach yourself as you learn, as That's you go right. along on how to reach the audience you're looking for. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just me doing it. I don't have any PR people. I'm, you know, I'm more or less, this is the, this is a hobby that I've been just making a few bucks back on and connecting with a lot of interesting people yep. and uh, doing some nice things for, you know, people along the way, like I said, with my donations and contributions and, um, you know, you got to give back. You got to, you know, you have to teach the generation behind us. That's right. How to give back. That's why. So I, that's why we that do might... this here. Because um, there's no money in internet radio. Uh, you got to do it because yeah. either either you you love what you're doing, or yeah, and you have you have a main goal. That's the only way you do it. Our goal is to get the unsigned <laughs> artists out there, to get people to listen to them and check them out, and provide uh, an outlet. So people can, you know, hear what's going on in the music news or music industry or entertainment or whatever that you're not going to hear on mainstream radio at all. So we try to, we cover all those bases. That's interesting. I got a question here. I had a, just got a, a message. Uh, somebody wanted to know, let's see. They said, ask what the best pizza in Rhode Island is. Mine. <laughs> my pizza because i could make a mean pizza <laughs> I, I you know having the kids i single father i gotta cook for them you know so yeah. but no i mean there's you know to say the best pizza it depends on it you like it thick thin mm -hmm. you know yeah. uh there's so many different ways you can make it i mean we're popular here for grilled pizza now mm. That's the popular thing, not doing it in the oven or like we do the brick pizza. Um, there's there's a local place, Catanzaro's. Uh, it's thick, very, very, very good. You can put any topping on it you want. You know, that's like an Italian, um, you know, old school type of uh, pizza pie or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, like I said, I make my own on my own grill. I got my some of my grandmother's pans. I make them in the pan in the oven, just like I learned all the other how to make homemade meatballs and mm -hmm. soup, chicken soup. So I'm pretty much my own cook, but I enjoy going to dinner and sampling all the restaurants. There's still restaurants here in Rhode Island that we haven't gotten to. Yeah, there's that many. Wow. You know, there's that many, and there's that many good ones. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of bad ones, but you got to try them and. You know, we're trying to eat healthy, of course. We're trying to, you know, I wasn't ready to go on the Monsters of Rock cruise with my winter coat on, but, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> I have to wear a costume every day to, uh, just to, you know, blend in. But I, I think it should be good. Mm -hmm. I'll be able to connect with some people and, you know, yeah. I actually, uh, I know Eddie Trunk is going to be on there, Luke Carl. Um I made them each a little cuff, so if they uh, if there's any way they listen to this, you know they'll they'll know that they maybe got one coming. Just okay. you know, I figured might as well, you know, make mm -hmm. them. I'm trying to think of who I can make them for before I get there, you know. Yeah. Are the other know, Lita, Lita Ford's? Are the other other two there, knuckleheads so. going to be there with him? 
Don Jameson? Are they, is Don Jameson going to be there with him? He might be, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. And I got to meet him here in Rhode Island at the, a local, uh, there was a local bar and grill. It was uh, right on Oak Lawn Avenue, 1150 Oak, it was called. And uh, he came to, uh, you know, he came to um, the place, the Faster Pussycat had come yeah. for the night. And uh, I got to meet the guys from there. Jamie Downey actually has one of my cuffs. There's a few pictures of him oh, on my cool. site with with the cuff on. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, actually, Zach Wild has got one. Uh, How'd you get it to him? Ford. She's got, she's got two. How'd you get it to Zach? Um, he was at a, a Nam show. You know, the Nam show yeah. out in Anaheim. Yeah, and. Uh, I've never been able to have the privilege to go to that. So this photographer out of Arizona, Gunnar Cal, okay. and his wife Holly were gracious enough to take some of the cuffs that I I sent to him, and he saw him, I believe, at Nam, and he gave him one. And you know, I never see it on Zach because he's got those huge gauntlets on all the yeah. time, the huge <laughs> ones, and you know, he'd probably need a matching set if I had to, you know, guess. Mm-hmm. But I mean, does he wear it? I don't know. Do half of these artists wear them? I don't know. But yeah. Do you ever see Shannon wearing his? Um, I I never even looked at his wrist. I'll, I'll notice him. I see him Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask yeah, him to it's bring a red it. leather cuff with a cross on it and some and some guitars. Oh, I'll I'll, I'll have yeah. him show me it when I see him Wednesday. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, you know, I I get. Uh, I believe in in uh, giving my product out to the right people, mm-hmm. okay? Here's how I look at it, you know. Um, I'm not going to just leave it in a suitcase in my car. Yeah. If I can if I can give something to someone that makes them feel good, mm-hmm. then whatever I get back is a plus, yep. you know. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to work with people in the industry and then, of course, the people that I, I can't, like I said, I can't give them out to the world, yeah. but people pay in between and, you know, it evens itself out. I give enough and I get enough, you know, so, mm-hmm. and if somewhere along the line, I've been in, actually, I was approached by a few different people that more or less wanted to mass produce them. And I said, well, you can do mass produce the idea and we can get a few people together and make a little assembly line. Mm-hmm. Keeping the keeping the jobs here in Rhode Island and creating jobs, but it just never materialized. Yeah. So I just go along at my pace, one cuff at a time. And now I got a bunch. I got a big inventory now. So when I go to a show, I'll set it up. You know, with the category categories, and you know, I even do military cuffs. I get oh, the challenge cool. coins, mm-hmm. and you know, you always have to um, respect and honor and be loyal to the military because they do everything they can for us. And yeah. uh, you said you served. So yeah, thank I did, you. I, did 10 years. I didn't get a chance to serve, you know, um, cause I, back when I was able to, I put my name in, but they said, because I was an only child, yeah, I don't have any brothers or sisters. They said they couldn't, they, there was oh, like wow. a pardon or whatever. And I was like, okay, I don't want people to think I'm ducking. I would have, yeah. I wouldn't have mind going and serve, you know, mm-hmm. I would have done it. It's a great experience, so. man. I'd do it all over again. <laughs> if if I physically yep. can do it, I would do it. You know, I'm, I'm sure at one point I probably could have gone into the the local National Guard. It probably would have been a little, you know, probably would have been okay. Mm-hmm. But again, they said that, they, you know, I guess it's an only child thing, something mm-hmm. I learned. Uh, let's see here. Just a couple more things, and we'll get, we're going to get going here. Uh, yeah. But uh, one more time, man. How can people get a hold of you know your merchandise and the that you know if they want if they're interested in getting some of this? Well, word of mouth is always the best. But uh, Facebook, Dennis Conti uh, design page. You can go to the Dennis Conti regular page uh, on Facebook. There's Instagram at um, uh, Dennis Conti designs. There's Twitter at Dennis Conti. 
Designs, and uh, Conti's, C-O-N-T-E, Conti's Custom Designs on the web. But like I said, with, with all those three social medias bringing me the most attention, People don't. People almost don't even go to the uh, the like the the website anymore to order it. You yeah. know, I've been on eBay and Pinterest and a few of those uh, Etsy and stuff like that. But it, I find that it's more labor to have to go and check the site all the time. Yeah. And millions of people. I mean, I've had I've had cuffs. I've shipped out to London. Wow. Um, there's a, a loyal girl out there, Dawn Osborne. She goes to all the shows. I'm going to see her on uh, Mark on the uh, Monsters of Rock cruise coming up. And she's, nice. she's designed her own. People can design their own cuffs if they want, if they have an idea. You have an idea for your cuff the, or the, you know, you want a patch for a jacket. I can make you a patch of your logo. That would be nice mm-hmm. for like a vest or something, you know. Send me the artwork that you want done. I'll do it on a patch. I can put it on a regular hot leathers vest and ship it out to you, and you can wear it, and you can talk all about me. <laughs> <laughs> and we can talk about each other in good ways and positive <laughs> ways that we can network with the world, you know? Yeah, I hear you. Let's see here. I got, a, so. I, I got a question here. This is coming from Beavis in our chat room. He's saying, ask him if he knows DJ Polly D from Rhode Island. Well, would he think less of me if I knew him? <laughs> but no, I do. I know of him. Mm-hmm. Um, I know his parents because he's younger. He's a generation younger. Um, yeah, I mean, he's he is what he is. You know, I don't know him well enough to to say we hung out. Mm-hmm. You know, he had his little run of fame. I wish him luck, whatever he does, you know. Yeah. I know he gets big money for DJ and parties. So everyone needs their thing, you know, That's everyone right. needs their uh, inlet, outlet, whatever makes them happy. And, you know, what, 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 some people catch a break, you know, <clears throat> yeah. I'd like to be able to um, catch your way, you know, get all my cuffs <laughs> out to everyone, yep. you know, everyone, I want to cuff the world. I so. <laughs> Everyone needs some sort of cop on their wrist. That's right. Yeah, so, I'll, I'll hit you. you know, I'll, this, hit, I'll hit. I'm going to hit you up on on Facebook. I think I, I added you already as a friend on there. Um, but I, yeah, I got ideas that we can um, work out something where we can do commercials and stuff like that on our our site here, and you know, we'll, we'll do some things. We'll, we'll do some working together. I mean, I don't do anything like with a cookie cutter. Style. Mm-hmm. I want to take your ideas yeah. and the people that can't produce what they want to do and put their ideas onto my little, um, what I can perform with it, you know, yeah. whether it's a cuff or I've done jeans, you know, I can customize jeans, a vest, I can airbrush something on the vest or just customize a vest. I take a regular mechanic shirt, a black mechanic shirt, and I can customize it with, you know, so you can wear it when you go to a um, concert. It's got a few patches, a little over the top, got some leather accents, some studs, some rhinestones. You know, I flare it out with some patches and, you know, a shirt like that might be 150 bucks. you know, um, all a hand-stitched patch on the back. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of my cuffs go from as little as 40 bucks for the less detailed ones all the way up to 150. I mean, it depends on the detail and what people are looking to achieve. You know, I'll do what anybody wants and, you know, it's all about what their expression is. So whatever, you know, whatever you're looking for, we'll make it work. Sounds good. Tell all your people out there, whatever ideas they have, they can, uh, message me and as i do it as i'm making the piece if they want to leave it totally up to me that's awesome too Mm -hmm. but as i'm making it i send pictures through how we contact each other and so they can see how it's coming so if they don't like it if they don't care then i i'm I'm stress-free i don't have to worry about showing them as i go Mm -hmm. but some people are a little more finicky and want a little more input so you know 
I let them, I asked them, what, what do you want to, base do you want to start off with? And what piece, what centerpiece of hardware do you want to make this around? A skull with rhinestones or, you know, Fender guitar. I've taken guitar neck plates from BC Fender and some of them are really, some of them are like 30 bucks oh, wow. for a, a, an, an etched, a laser etched uh, guitar neck plate and I'll put that on a cuff and uh, I know Ron Keel has one like that with a skull on it mm -hmm. um, and again I got that for him through this photographer Gunner Cow who does the Monsters of Rock cruises and does all things like that to cruise to the edges. And then there's another the photographer out in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, Dave Stabley. I see him here and there. He got me connected with a few people. Um, there's a few local photographers around here. Uh, Ron Hoxie, um, Eric Keir. You know, everyone's trying. My other friend, Brian Poor. Um, got a lot of photographer friends and we network. I'll make them a cuff or I'll give them a shirt and they'll get me a little connection with the artist because they can get in. You know, yeah. they'll ask to get me in. So I'll happen to, you know, I get to see Todd Latour from Queensryche. He's got like three of my cuffs. Oh, that's and he sweet. He them on stage. So let's see. I got so it's an honor to have all these artists and people too, the everyday people. That's what we got to obviously thank too. You know, I oh, mean, yeah. the everyday people want the music from the artist and then want the stage wear from me. Mm -hmm. So it makes me feel humble that I can provide that for people. Mm -hmm. Never forget that, you know. I, I got two questions here. Uh, this one's also from from our chat room there. Asking if it's, they're saying that when you meet Eddie Trunk and you throw him off the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Is he not that approachable? <laughs> no, he no that he's not. He's, he's a good guy. Yeah, we go. Me and him go back a bunch of years. He definitely uh, has a lot of information in his head oh, yeah. about history. And another about music history that is. Another question they have. I said, ask if did did he ever customize anything for Joey DeMaio of Man of War a custom loincloth? I would if he wanted me to. <laughs> I haven't yet though. I. Hey, if anybody is friends with any artist and can get my stuff to them, mm -hmm. you know, that would be great. I mean, I'm all about that, you know, so I'll make something for somebody that will be willing. It's it's funny because people ask me to make something you know, like this, this one woman, um, Bonnie Zachko, she's, uh, I forget where she's from. Um, I met her at M3. Also, Maryland, she might be outside of Pennsylvania or something. She had me make Kerry Kelly of Night Ranger mm -hmm. this $200 uh, guitar strap. So I Ooh. laid it out all black, red stitching mm -hmm. with two Ks on it, all in white with rhinestones. And I don't even think the guy got it. She paid <laughs> for it. I, you know, we posted it on Facebook. We got a million likes or comments and mm -hmm. Then I see him at M3, and I'm like, hey, you know, did you ever get the package from Bonnie? Yeah, she's, you know, a stalker or whatever. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, she's just a fan, you know? Wow. I'm like, I made a, I made a couple of things for Kelly. I was hoping for, for Kerry. I said, I yeah. hope he w gets them. And, you know, that wasn't really cool that, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of played it off like, you know, here it is. I'm making something by hand. You've got a fan paying for yeah. it, and you don't know where it is. Wow. Really? So they you know, paid. How, how many other fans do stuff like that for their? So I mean, she maybe maybe she idolizes the guy. She posts pictures of him on it's her profile picture. Sometimes she likes she likes her artists. The artists that are famous mm -hmm. should be a little more humble and say, you know, appreciate that you got people that follow you and want yeah. your autograph and want to make you stuff. You know. Yeah. I mean, I got people that want to meet me on this cruise. I never thought somebody would want to meet me. Mm -hmm. You're a celebrity <laughs> I'm now. Just a local guy. <laughs> nah, I'm just, I'm, I'm just somebody who makes stuff that people like. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, you're part of the industry now. 
Yeah, yeah looking I like that. So, yeah. You know, but like I said, I, I, you know, I never want, I always want to give back and I never want to take for granted, you know, because mm-hmm. um, that's the point when you, you know, people change. Oh, yeah. You know, I've yeah. seen people have nothing, get something, and they just change and they look at things different. Yep. I hear you. So. Okay, hey man, we gotta get going here because I got gotta get this um the Gus G interview going. Um, but I definitely thank you, so, man, for you know being on the show here tonight with us. So you so before me, you had a guitarist yep. from what group? That was from Firehouse, Bill Leverty. Oh yeah, Firehouse. Mm-hmm. And then after me, you're having the guitarist from Ozzy. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, it was a pleasure to have this much time. No problem. We did pretty good, almost an hour. And <laughs> it was it was nice to hear about you, you know you as well. You oh, know? thank you. I never wanted to be all about me, so mm-hmm. it's it's all about us. Yeah, that's it. Know? I hear you. All right. Well, thank you for everybody that um, took the time to listen and ask the questions, and everyone knows where to hit me up. Facebook. It's basically my name, Dennis Conti. So that's C O N T what site they go on, they'll find me. That's C O N T E, right? Yeah, Dennis D E T two N's I S. My middle initial is F as in Frank uh Frank. And then Conti C O N T E and then uh I'm a junior as well. So Gotcha. Okay, man. Hey, Dennis F. Conti Jr. Thank you. You're quite welcome, man. Have yourself a good evening. You too. Okay, have a good one. Take care. You too. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. And there you have it. So, yeah, definitely go check him out. Um, hit him up on Facebook there, man, because I, I was on there, man. He was pretty impressive with all the things I saw that he was putting out there. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, so, whew, yeah, definitely go do that. Check that out. Okay, man, we'll be back after this. I got some music we're about to throw at you right now, and we're going to come back with a Gus G interview. But here you go. This is dedication. This one goes out to Beavis in the chat room. And right after that, we have the music to follow. Be back after this. Thanks again for tuning in. I am wearing an alligator skin loincloth right now. Nice. And I just, right. Fuck you, Beavis. Fuck you, Beavis. Beavis, how could you doubt the kid, you fucking weirdy? <laughs>
miss the live show, go to stitcherradio.com and search Maximum Threshold and listen in today. That's Maximum Threshold and Stitcher Radio, a match made in heaven. Trailers rocking, probably with their sister. I mean, we're listening to Maximum Threshold right here. Maximum Threshold Radio Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, one more thing and we're getting out of here. Getting ready to go knock out this um, Gus G interview. So check it out and got some new firewind coming on right after that. And we'll come back, we'll close up shop and we'll get out of here and all that. Let's see how long this interview is. It is, I don't know, I couldn't see. Let me try this again. Oh, it's really short. So, okay. <laughs> it's like three minutes long. Okay, I'll be right back after all this. Hey, everybody, this is Gus G, and you're listening to Maximum Threshold. Hi, all you metal maniacs. This is Nikki May with Maximum Threshold here at NAMM 2017, and with me right now is Gus G. You may know him as a guitar player for Ozzy, and also his other band, Firewind. How are you today, Gus? I'm tired. I hear you. I've been running around all day. Yeah. It's it's a madhouse, NAMM. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I think I'm. I'm almost done. Just but, about done. Just about done. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you. So am I. Uh, so we are here at NAMM. So I have to ask, who are you representing? Jackson Guitars. I'm representing myself, I should say that. <laughs> I'm not representing anybody else, but I'm here on behalf of Jackson Guitars, presenting my, my uh, signature guitars. Awesome, awesome. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for those of our fans who've been living under a rock. What was that again? Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself for our fans that have been living under a rock. My name is Gus G. I'm 36 years old. I play guitar for 26 years. I play with Ozzy Osbourne, I play with Firewind, I'm a heavy metal guitar player. I released 20 albums, sold a few million records, and uh, that's it. <laughs> wow. Wow. All that, you're making me tired just hearing yeah, that. Yeah, it's been a lot of work, but I'm enjoying it. Good, good. Speaking of Ozzy, what was it like to get the call to come in and audition for Ozzy? It's insane. I never, you know, it's one of those, it's not one of those things that you expect to happen to you, you know? But it did happen to me, and um, changed my life completely for the better and uh, yeah I still pinch myself awesome awesome uh, I noticed that no matter where your musical journey takes you uh, whether it be joining Ozzy's band or doing your solo stuff it seems like you always come back to Firewind well that's my baby I've had that band since I was 18 years old and I worked hard to build that band and uh, we we are in the point where we've done like seven. This is our eighth album, The Immortals, and um, it's, I don't do uh, albums with Firewind as fast as I used to do now um, because other things have gotten in the way as well, like my solo career or work with Ozzy. But it's just something that you know, it's my baby, and uh, I would never want to let it die. You know. Awesome, awesome, and that's awesome. Eight albums. Yeah. Uh. And on top of all of that, you have some Asian tour dates coming soon? Yeah, with my solo band. It's in March. Uh, going to Japan for two shows and Korea. And before that, in February, we'll have a European tour with Firewind. Okay. So is there going to be any more Firewind tour for 2017? There is, yeah. We're booking fest- We're already booked for a lot of festivals in Europe. And we're looking at uh, going to other places now, like Russia or maybe South America. And, uh, so, yeah, stuff keeps getting added. And is there anything going on with Ozzy? Well, he announced a couple of festivals this week, so in July, so I guess we'll be doing those. And I don't know anything about, uh, I mean, other than that, I don't know anything about it. I haven't heard anything. Awesome, awesome. Uh, don't want to take up too much more of your time. Thank you very Is there much. anything you'd like to tell our listeners before we chime off? Yeah, um, keep listening to Metal. Thanks for the support, and I hope they check out the new album. And thank you for the interview. Uh, no problem. So go and check him out, whether it's his solo band, Firewind, Ozzy, get out there, support, and occupy. This is Nikki May for Maximum Threshold.
And there you go, man. There's Firewind. And we're getting out of here, man. That was Gus G. And I want to thank them for taking their time. Uh, and Nam, the talking with us and be able to squeeze a quick little interview out there. So I really appreciate it. And yeah, get, get that new Firewind, man. That's some good stuff on there. Definitely, man. Hey, Gus G, man, he got some good riffs in there. So, hey, I want to thank everybody for tuning in this week's edition of the Max and Threshold Radio Show. I definitely want to thank Bill Leverty, uh, Dennis Conti, and as well, Gus G, and everybody else who helped put this episode together. Thank you very much. And for all you listening out there, I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this. And I've got one more song and we're out of here. So, on that note, I'll see you guys next week. And, um, yeah. Be cool. Yeah. Yeah. We are boarding back from
just listen to Maximum Threshold Radio Show. Airs live every Saturday night, 8 p.m. until whenever the fuck they shut up. So tune in. It is pointless to resist. 